coming through and getting heavy. It's time to talk some dynasty and talk some Debbie. My guys is never short. Time to sit down and let the DJs cook. Get out. Hello, welcome to Dynasty DGens episode 22. I am Nerd Boy Takes. I am usually always joined by Jagger, but Jagger needed the night off. I know that we always talk about him being a little saturated with work, um, and it finally got to him. It finally caught up with him. I knew it would, um, but I am going solo tonight, and I'm joined by an amazing guest. Um, our guest tonight does content work for P2W. He also is with FF League Winners. Um, he's a great guy on x i have to get used to saying that on x um, we've had good interactions um and and you know i think he's just going to be an amazing guest tonight um this is jesse mueller at j mueller 05 wait i hope i said your last name right it's mueller? it's molar but it's close enough don't Mueller. worry about it people people mueller. get it wrong all the time they'll be like mueller molar and they'll just they'll do the umlaut thing it's yeah it is what it is i'm not too worried about it i had i had dustin ludkey on here and when he came on I thought that his handle was done it. So I kept calling him the done it and it's D unit. And he finally corrected me at the end of the pod and was like, Hey, it's D unit. And I was like, like, Oh, it's very different than done it. You know? Yeah, right. Like, Just a like, little bit. It's like, well, <laughs> I've done that before. I have people on and then I forget to ask them their name if I'm unsure and we'll like go into it. And then at the end of it, like you're talking about, I'm like, did I say that right? They're like, no. And I'm like, I'm such an idiot. Like, my yeah, God, I right. usually do ask, but I, yeah, I was like, so yeah you know i just I, I was winging it i was hoping for the best um but i'm glad that you could come on so so jesse jumped on almost last minute um we had a, a last minute cancellation so i had my guest cancel and then my co-host cancel um so nobody really wants to be on the pod with me so jesse bit the bullet and he joined with me and um, whether he regrets that i don't know but he's he's here so. i guess i guess we'll find out right <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so we are going to be talking about the shifts in fantasy the last mm-hmm. couple of weeks. So the first few weeks, we see a lot of injuries, trades, so mostly backfields that we're going to be talking initially. Um, obviously, the Nick Chubb injury and then the Cam Akers trade. Um, there's big fantasy impact for both of those. Like Obviously, there's the impact of uh, Minnesota and then... Obviously, the Rams are left with one running back for the most part um, because Zach Evans looks like he is not going to be used at all this year for whatever reason. Um, And then, you know, we're going to talk about whether Jerome Ford might be the guy for the whole season or if Kareem Hunt kind of comes in and and maybe steals that job um, if he has the juice for it. Who knows? Um, Before we get into that, though, I'm just going to try to figure out how you got into the space like your initial introduction to fantasy um and then ultimately what got you into content creation so i actually have been playing fantasy football since sixth grade and i'm in my mid-30s now so this is a long time of playing fantasy football um my dad was on yahoo back in sixth grade and i was he was doing some fantasy game whatever and i hopped on the computer when i had a minute i started playing and i was like "Ooh, what is this right and it's, it's drawn to me because I've been in sports my entire life, like playing baseball, basketball, football, all the way through college and stuff like that. So it's just been a part of my life as far as I can remember. Like every every fall, it'd be like fantasy football time. Like, let's roll. Um, so I did that all the way um, up until right around COVID, right? And this is the story that happens for a lot of people. But my wife was the one who actually pushed me in. She was like, you love this, right? I was like, yeah, I do. I very much do. She's like, why don't you do something to this? And I was like, oh, light bulb. Like, yeah, let's see what happens, right? So I put out a tweet um, talking about Kirk Cousins being Dynasty Buy, where it was like a layered tweet with like 10, 15 like, tweets attached to it. And somebody reached out. They're like, hey, do you want to write content? And I was like, what do you mean? And they were like, yeah, like come write content for us. And I was like, you want me to be a writer? Like, no, that sounds weird, right? And so my wife was like, just do it. So I jumped in and been doing it for three years strong and haven't looked back. So it's just been, it's been a roller coaster, like. Like you're talking about Jagger, same thing with me. I definitely do not have all the time that I plan to so do all the content with, but like I enjoy it. So I'm just making the best of the situation, trying to promote as much content as I can all the time. Obviously, it doesn't work out with a wife, kid, you know, family, work and stuff like that. But yeah, that's kind of the elongated story, I guess you could say. 
yeah, I've had a couple episodes where I've gotten guys on here um, and they started from COVID. But when COVID happened, like everyone had all the time in the world. You know, it was so easy to pump content out. Um, everyone was doing content because everyone was at home on the couch watching Netflix all day anyway. So it was like, what else are we going to do? Um, right. But it is hard to find that balance of, you know, spending time with your kids, spending time with your wife, um, you know, like actually working because unfortunately like 95% of us don't really get paid for this. And it's, it's a, a fun gig that we do um, to try to help people mostly, you know, it's, it's yeah. good to, to build content. Um, I think it's great to have this knowledge and to like give it to people and put it out there. Um, but it's not really paying the bills. So it's hard to make this a priority when you do have a family and you do have bills to pay and a mortgage or rent or whatever, you know? So it's like hard to find that. Like I said, the balance is, is tricky. Um, but I, I see, yeah, you're, you're out there grinding, um, you know, and I appreciate your work and I'm finally glad that we got, we got on the pod together and, and can chop it up a little bit. Um, yeah, but, I have, like when you when you reached out the last minute, I was like, yeah, let me check. Like, if I got time, I'll happily come on. Like, I always love when anyone reach out to you in the space, like to like ask you to come on the show. Like, I treat that as an honor. So, like, if I have the time, I'll happily make the time for people. Like, so yeah, I was happy to show up. You know? Yeah, yeah. If I if I have the time, I'll always say yes. And and that that comes and bites me in the butt a little bit sometimes because I'll say yes to things like <laughs> months out, and then they're like, "Are you ready to go tomorrow?" And I'm like, "Oh, yeah, uh, yeah." Let's let's go tomorrow. I guess I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm ready to go. Um, so I gave you guys the overlay of what we're gonna talk about. Let's just jump into it. Um, so obviously Nick Chubb looked like a gruesome injury. Jesse and I were talking about it backstage. How he only has a torn MCL is beyond me. I have no idea how that's possible. Um, I thought his entire leg was gonna have to be you know, replaced at that point in time. Like I just thought that from the knee down, it was going to be unusable. Um, so having it only be a, a tear of the MCL is, is good news. Um, I know that we talked about Nick Chubb's age. Do you think Chubb is going to come back to be a legitimate fantasy asset? Like somebody that might come back and, and put up at least, startable numbers or is this injury almost going to just drop him down to, you know, like a, a cuff status almost. Yeah. Like I'll, so the weird thing is because he's the older back, you almost just instantly want to fade him. Right. Because he's easy reaching that age curve anyways and the work and all that on top of it. But like, if there's anybody who's Superman who could beat this, it's Nick Chubb. Like he had a gruesome injury in college, which is way worse than this injury he had this time. So like I somehow he got lucky this time, but I thought, yeah, like you're saying, they're basically going to have to give him a metal leg and he would be done for. Um, one of the injury doctors was talking about, like, they were worried about his arteries. That's how bad they thought the injury was. So, like, when you're talking about that severity, you're like, ooh, yeah, he's done for his career, right? So I put out a TikTok. I was like, yeah, I think his career's done, blah, blah, blah. Like, jumped the gun a little bit. And then news came out. And I was like, wait, like, he could come back next year? This is insane. So I'm really cautious with him. Uh, I think I traded, like, Rondale Moore for him in the league just because – I don't really see any upside with Rondale more. So, like, I'll just take it. And if it burns a roster spot with Nick Chubb, like, sure, whatever. Like, I think there's significantly more upside with him. Um, but I don't – he's not someone I'm going to target where you're, like, spending a second-round pick or anything like that or investing decent capital in him. I'm just going to kind of just let the situation play out. And if he comes back and he shows it, sure, I'm a contending team. Like, I'll throw flyers at him. But, yeah, I'm kind of just going to have a hands-off approach. I just – I'm still worried. Like, I just – I need to see more before I can – confidently say one way or the other right like the age the in multiple injuries of the same knee like that's never what you want to hear so it's just like we'll just we'll take it back and see what happens kind of like similar to Dobbins like I'm just I don't want anything to do with Dobbins like that yeah significant yeah. injury again and so it's, we, yeah that's what yeah we we talked about Dobbins a little bit a couple pods ago and um I think I think Dobbins more than Chubb is somebody that you know it may be is like a Gus Edwards because he's got that age factor on his side where he can come back and be possibly like a good fill in, um, you know, cause we've seen people come back from this injury. I mean, Cam Akers is still in the league right now and 
he flashed. We're going to touch on him a little later in the pod, but like he, he flashed that the Achilles injury isn't necessarily a ender. Like everyone had previously thought it's just crazy that there's two Achilles injuries between Rogers and, and Dobbins in like a 48 hour period, not even a 48 hour period. I think it was a Sunday, Monday turn there. So, um, just yeah, br- just brutal. I feel for Jets I know. fans, man. I just I feel for those guys. I'm like, sheesh. I, I'm a Patriots fan, so I don't really feel for Jets fans at all. So I, <laughs> I mean, I no, I I wanted after hard knocks and watching that, I really wanted them to succeed. I'm a big Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall guy. Um, yeah. Obviously, I like I like their system. I like I liked seeing everyone that was um, coming into hard knocks and. You know, it's just like a good team chemistry for the most part. So I yeah. think, you know, I was I was quietly rooting for them this year because I don't think the Patriots are going to do anything for the next couple of years anyway. So I yeah. I do need a team close they seem to kind me of like maybe. The middling team that's just stuck in the muck. Like, they're not good. They're not bad. They're just in between. That's like a terrible spot to be in the dynasty, right? Because you have no direction. That kind of feels like the Patriots. They're too good to tank, but not good enough to yeah. compete. So it's kind of well, just it's kind of like, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Dude, the Patriots just need like a legitimate wide receiver one. You know, if they like took, if they took Addison or Zay Flowers instead of Gonzalez, even though Gonzalez looks like he's a stud, like yeah. they they could have easily, like they're losing games by three points or five points. You know, like they lost to Philly by like a, a touchdown, and then they, I don't remember who they played week two. The Dolphins, they lost by like five points. So it was like, you know, you're a touchdown away from winning these games. And what do you need to make a touchdown? Like a legitimate, he's throwing to like Devontae Parker and, um, you know, like a a fourth round wide receiver. And then they have Butte who was undrafted. So it's like their, their entire wide receiver group is, it's like, it's, it's such a, a, a hodgepodge of like, you know, like put it together and hope for the best. It's um, like, it's funny. Cause pop, like everybody's hyping up pop Douglas, but if you're talking about pop Douglas to be the number one on your team, right? Like that's a problem. So like, that's kind of the whole situation you're talking about. I was like, man, they, they let Jacoby go. Don't know why they did that. Like that, that pained me to see he's like, obviously he can do more. And like you're saying, if they had Zay flowers because he can play everywhere on the field and like do everything that you need. Like, I think that would have been a perfect fit because you can put him in the slot, put him outside. He can run deep. He can run short underneath. He act like that's the ideal guy you want in this offense. So yeah, my daughter's awake. By the way, she she came Hi. in. <laughs> she makes pod appearances every once in a while. This is Penelope. That's what my daughter does too. Yeah. Like last last she, week, my daughter was naked and just ran into the room. And I go, okay, we're gonna have to take a break here. Nice. I'm glad that she has clothes on. So, <laughs> um, yeah. To to go back to a you know, full circle, I Nick Chubb to me. I would probably sell for, oh man, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think I would sell for a third or a fourth at this point in time. I, yeah, I like not that, that I, I, not that I think that he's worth that, but like the value that we've been seeing in the third round lately, um, mm-hmm. the last couple of years is like insane, you know, like to think that you can, you can get like a Puka in the third round. Um, and, and, even before that, like it's luck of the draw. So I I want to say that he's going to hold value, but he's got a, like a steep hill to climb with his age. Um, and they're not going to hold that spot for him. So let's, let's talk about Jerome Ford, even though I liked him coming out. Like I, I like him a lot because he was injured. Um, a good chunk of, I think last year and then into camp, he was not ready for it. Um, but he was somebody that I was strongly advising people to pick up because of Chubbs, not because I thought Chubb was going to get injured, but because of his age and without hunts, somebody was going to pick up on the receiving work or, you know, like I think they would, they just have a two back system there for the most part. Um, so Ford, played a lot of wide receiver in college because he was in Alabama with Najee Harris and Brian Robinson. Um, and that was like, you're not going to get backfield touches with those guys. Like it's not going to happen. Um, so he, he did a lot of 
like mixing and matching. And then he eventually, I think transferred to Cincinnati. Um, and then he, he blossomed and had that, that monster year that he had, but I, I don't know what you think of him this year. I love him this year. I, I think he is going to be a set it and forget it like back end, maybe RB one. You know, because of his receiving profile, um, I saw him. I, I did some tape breakdown of him, and he his receiving touchdown. He ran like a perfect sluggo. So what he did was he like totally turned his entire body, like he like sold the DB like to the fullest, and he came back and then went up and he bought it. Um, so if he's going to be doing that kind of stuff for the most part, I know that he didn't do much on the ground this this game he went 10 for 18 um and then he had one receiving touchdown and then receiving he went two for 33 and then had a i'm sorry he had one running touchdown and then one receiving touchdown so he had a total of two touchdowns um i I think they're gonna rely heavily on him because we're gonna get into watson but it looks like he that that system just needs a running back. Like there's their offense is designed around a run game and they, they are going to plug and play anybody. Um, so you, you were pretty high on Jerome Ford for the rest of the year. Yeah. So for last week when I did my like um, pickups, I had my 50 plus percent of like fab to drop on him for this year. Cause I'm very confident in him being like a solid RB two. The interesting thing is he ran 22 of 37 possible routes like for them last week. And that's like, that's a good sign. That's what you want to see. Like if he's running that type of route usage and he's going to get targeted, like that's how you, you're talking about being RB one. He just needs to run hot on touchdowns. Like we always talk about Chubb running hot on touchdowns. Same thing. He's obviously not Chubb, but the thing that he has similar to Chubb is he's an explosive rusher. And that's what this offense desperately needs. And this is why Kareem Hunt's not a problem for him because Kareem Hunt does not have any juice anymore. He's not explosive. Like Ford brings a different element to the offense. So like, I know people were like, Oh, Ford. I'm like, yeah, don't worry about Kareem Hunt. Like Kareem Hunt will play a role, but he's not going to be the guy. Ford's going to be the guy. And they had him there the like, entire year. Like he gets the work, he has the job and he knows everything he needs to do. So like, I'm very confident in him. If you're, if you're on a contending team, like I had somebody offer me a second for him on a contending team and I desperately need a running back. I was real tempted to pay it. Like I don't want to pay it, but like realistically, like I'll, I'll probably end up paying it just because yeah. I'm dealing with like Jamal Williams and some of these other guys that are all out because I'm so heavy a wide receiver and my running back situation is just like zero RB kind of. So like, that's the ideal build where I'm like, yeah, go throw two at him, you know, and you write it up. So yeah, like if you can do that, sure. If you're on the flip side of contender, if you can get it to just sell them, like there's no long-term security. He's a day three pick. Like these guys, this is what I was talking about the off season. Like these day three picks, like they have no security until they have it. So why bet on that security until they get paid? Right. Cause when they get the security, you can always buy back into like Ramondre or Tony Pollard or all those guys, right? So, but yeah, in the short term, like I like him and he should be good and productive for you. So like if he's seeing the snaps and the routes and the work that he's going to see in this offense, which you're talking about revolves around a running back, then yeah, like it should be a very good season for him for it. So I'm actually pretty excited with him to see that offense. And like that defense is so good. They're going to be in such close games. They're going to lean on the running back. Like that's on top of it too. So yeah, it's just going to be, it's going to be a really fun season. Um, And then on the flip side hunt, like I just, I don't really want anything to do with Hunt. Like he's old yeah. and he's you can he's kind of lost it. Like you can kind of see it. He's not the same back. So it's just kind of just like just get what you can for him and just move on, Dynasty. Like I, I sold him for two thirds in like uh like a week or two before the season started. And I was like, Yeah, we're good with that. Like let's just let's move on. And yeah, I think that's where I'm at with him. So I'm I'm curious, like, do you value Hunt at all in Dynasty? Or are you kind of like on the same wave like that I am? Then? No, I'm I'm with that. I think Hunt is purely just um, you know, like to have that security and, you know, they're, they're not necessarily signing him to use him like heavily or anything like that. They're, they're just signing him so that they can have, um, you know, three usable running backs on the roster. And, and I, I mean, Hunt was always a receiving threat. And I think Jerome Ford has more talent as a receiving back in general. Um, like I said, he, he has that skill set. And watching him run like routes and, and watching him run them better than some wide receivers on that team. Um, you know, I think he's he's probably better than um at least 
two of the wide receivers that they have in regular rotation there when it comes to his his crispiness and his footwork um because like you said he's explosive and you can see that in his his route running um so i i don't think hunt's going to be he's going to be a relief i think he's going to be a third down back um and he's going to spell ford but i expect ford to be the the workhorse in that in that backfield for sure um you know because you know these these guys are dying out and the the wall <laughs> the hunt has lasted i think two years longer than he should have um yeah. i'm not i'm not nervous about a running back that is unsigned up until week three you know like right. that doesn't put a lot of fear in my heart um because even ezekiel elliott found a contract in the off season so it's like it, it, the Z thing's you know. weird. Like how they used him last week, I was like, okay, what the hell are they doing? Like he's running a lot around. I was just surprised. I was like, I thought Ramondre was a better receiver, but I, I don't know. I'm so confused about what's going on there this year. I know, and and honestly, I probably will start him in a couple leagues with Dallas on deck next week because that just feels like a easy, easy like cake situation. Um, right, they're gonna, you know, yeah, Bel- they're gonna Belichick, yeah. Belichick is, um, he's like that, you know, like he's very petty. Um, so I think he'll, he'll side with Zeke and he'll probably try to get him a lot of work in that game. Um, so, uh, you know, for anybody listening before the slate, I think that Ramondre might actually cede some touches to Zeke this week. And I don't know if he's going to be a good start personally, even though it's Dallas and, you know, Dallas looks kind of broken right now. Um, but let's let's kick it over to Cam Akers being traded. So Cam Akers was obviously he's somebody that fell in out of favor um, in the Rams backfield that I don't know what – I have no idea what happened. I think it's the ugly situation from an outside point of view that I, I could ever imagine. You know, like the beginning of last year, he was somebody that – was in and out of the facility like he was gone for a while he just didn't want to be there or he had personal issues um and then he he got he came back and they weren't using him um and then he all of a sudden put up like mid rb1 numbers to end the season and it was like oh well cam Akers is back you know like i think that's what everyone was thinking especially like with his adp everyone was like oh let's go get cam Akers. let's go grab cam Akers." um and then he he put up like 18 for 30 yards i think in his first game and, and then it was like okay we're gonna trade game makers um so he landed on minnesota and obviously minnesota is almost open they have alexander madison and alexander madison didn't do anything the first couple of games and then all of a sudden put up a nice game uh, Madison, I think, went for 20 carries for 93 yards. Um, and then he uh, re- had receiving yards of 32. So, I mean, good game. Best game of his, a season happened, you know, right after Cam Akers is traded. Um, so I, does Cam Akers have value now? Does he all of a sudden – like I personally think Cam Akers, even after the Achilles injury – still is a more talented running back than Alexander Madison. Um, You know, and I don't know if it was maybe the situation that he was in. Um, I I have to imagine that was pretty toxic for a while based off of last season and, and the beginning of this year where they just all of a sudden traded him. Um, There was probably a lot going on in, in the back there, like the, the, scene where nobody could really see what was happening. Um, probably some coaches issues and I don't think McVay really liked him very much. Um, so maybe a change of scenery is good for him. I think he probably at worst is splitting time with Madison, um, between Madison and acres. Who do you want to own in that backfield? Uh, I don't want either of these running backs, but the the thing is the situation so nice is it's like, expected points it's rb1 like the role is fantastic for a running back it's just cam makers had these issues in college where they called out his personality and said he was like prickly and stuff and you see this happen in la like they basically kicked him off the team before brought him back 
And then same issues again happened this year. Like he that first game watching against Seattle, I watched it. He looked awful. He couldn't do anything. There was nothing. And you see, you see Kyron Williams come in. And he looked like he was a such better back. Like I don't, I don't know what Cam Akers doing. He's missing the assignment. It was just, it's gross. So like the hard part about it is I don't really want to invest in either one of these guys because like the issues surrounding both of them, I just don't think Madison's that good. And they obviously don't want him to be like an RB one bell cow because like they're trying to find someone else, right? And they bring in Acres because it's just like a dart throw. It's like a twenty twenty six like swap of picks, right? So it's like yeah, that hey, was an okay, ugly well, trade, man. That was awful. Tires. It was That's like, like what okay, I send so. out in dynasty trades when I need this guy dropped. You know, like I'll I'll attach a fifth rounder and hopefully get a fourth rounder. You know, like yeah. or or something of that magnitude. And that's exactly what that was. They were just taking whatever. You know, like they they didn't care. They just wanted them off the roster. Um, yeah, it's it's funny because like they have they brought we thought Mike McBride might be something because of his stats in college and how like good of a rusher he was, but that just seems like the competition was so terrible. He was good because if you listen to the camp reports, like they tried to involve both McBride, Nuwangu, and I can't remember the other guy's name there, the third guy. But like Ty, Ch- all, Ty Chandler, yeah, Ty Chandler, they all struggled like according to camp reports. Like they couldn't like earn what they wanted to do, so like they were kind of churning, trying to find someone. That's why we heard so much like hype about one of the veteran running backs going there, like Kareem Hunt or one in Fortnite. It just never materialized. So they finally got someone who's younger and who has shown promise. I think the issue with Cam Makers is. He's tantalizing. You see stuff that's promising, but then on the flip side, he's just does some negative stuff on and off the field. So it's just like he's just – I really don't like investing in these guys because they feel hyper-fragile to me. Like one day he'll go for, you know, 20 carries, buck 50, two touchdowns, and the next week it's 20 carries, 22 yards, missed blocking assignment. like some, So it's just like they're not consistent. So from a dynasty perspective, I just kind of avoid the situation. Like, yeah, maybe you can get him for like a three. If you want to throw a three at one of them. That's fine. Just because the offense is so good, one of them is going to produce. It just, I think it's realistic. Like you're talking about, it's going to be more mucked up though, where they'll like have some good games and some bad games between the two of them. So until we kind of see it shake out, I'm just kind of just hands off. And then if one of them steps forward and earns a role for it, like maybe Madison holds them off or Acres comes on, like cool. The offense is so good as long as they keep presence there. He's literally supporting like a top five tight end, a wide receiver one, a wide receiver two. And should be an RB one. Like that offense is just, it's just a godsend for fantasy. So yeah, yeah like it's, it's perfect. That and that's, it's, it's, yeah, it's I want perfect. the running back on that. I want that running back on that team because mm-hmm. there's going to be no stack boxes. Like, so to Cam Akers defense, he was going pretty hard last year with no Stafford and like a stack box every single game all game long he was putting up numbers against like t- teams that like i don't remember who was the running or the quarterback it was like john wolford or something like i don't remember who it was but it was it was messy and he was going against the stack box every time because they were like they're gonna run it they're gonna run it they're gonna run it um and he put up good numbers so it's like do i think he's gonna be that in minnesota i don't know but you're right. I don't think I want any part of any of those guys unless it's a significant discount. Um, and I don't know if anybody is going to be selling Madison off of that big game or Cam Akers off of that trade at a discount um, mm-hmm. because it's, uh, you know, they, they have hope now. Um, I think the time to get Madison at a discount was last game, you know, yeah. week two when he got stuffed and he put up 18 yards or whatever it was. Um they also had makers two really was, good defenses they went up against, too. The fronts, like, the fronts dominated them. So, like, it was yeah. the worst-case scenario for Madison to show off, like, those first two games. I think it was, like, Tampa, and then it was the Eagles. And it's like, yeah, you're going to get marked up front. So they did, and he just looked terrible. So it's nice to see him kind of bring it back together. Where he's like, yeah, he's a capable running back, and they both should be capable. So, yeah, it's it's interesting. Like, I'm, I'm intrigued, but I'm not willing to, like, part with significant capital or, like, a player or anything like that. So, yeah, if you can yeah. sell high on one of them, like – all for that. Yeah. I think Madison is somebody I would sell everywhere at this moment. Um, I would probably try to get whatever I can off of that game. Um, and then, get, you know, there's so many dynasty managers out there that are. So what have you done for me lately? What have you done recently? Mm-hmm. Um, they probably see that game and think that that's what Madison's going to do for the rest of the season, which he might, who knows? I mean, I, I couldn't tell you, um, I'd love to be like a, a fortune teller and tell you what's going to happen with that backfield. But yeah. that's why it's on this podcast. Like, 
I, I have no idea. And I think it's fun to talk about, but ultimately there's, there's no rhyme or reason to how they're going to split that backfield and what they're going to do. I think eventually one of them becomes the lead back, but who it is, I couldn't tell you. Um, but that's going to lead us to our next segment here. And I think he told us that his name is not pronounced how we say it, but I'm going to still say it how I know I've been saying it for the last two years is Devon a chain had a breakout party and i i loaded up a video for this you saw it but devonna chain they must have amnesia they forgot that i'm him <laughs> that is him yeah. him yes, he's so good man he's so good so the, the funny thing about this is i'm the defending champ in my home dynasty league right and i was starting jared goff as one of my quarterbacks and i was like man i'm just getting worked when i'm going against allen mahomes and hurt right so i included a chain uh pits and a couple other picks to get hurts the day before he goes off for 50 good points and i was like i picked the worst possible time to send that trade. like i'm still happy i got hurt so it's whatever right but man i was like i picked the worst time to do that trade. i was like fuck it. of course he goes off but yeah like i yeah. so i had him as my pick 110 in rookie drafts and people were like, dude, he's small. I'm like, I don't care. He's tough as shit. But like, he's a good inside runner. He's fast as you know what. Like, you see him and he just takes off. And we saw that against the Broncos with all the dead bodies laying on the ground. He's just gone. And he's a good, like, he's a good receiver too. So he gives you everything you're looking for in quite possibly the best offense in the NFL. I think I saw a fun EPA stat. If you combined the Dolphins EPA on offense and the Browns EPA on defense, like that team would be plus a thousand points at the end of the year if they like worked out the scenario. So it's like there, it just it's an incredible situation. And this is why I was so hyped, and so many people were so hyped about him going to the Dolphins because it's the perfect situation. You get one of the fastest players in the league who's a good running back, and like it, it's gonna open up because you got Tyreek and Waddle, right? And honestly, they did it even without Waddle, like they didn't even need Waddle. So it's just yeah, it's absurd. Like it's just it's perfect. So yeah, I'm all aboard the Devon A chain train. Or sorry, Devon. Like yes, it's not even a chain. It's like I forget how we said the last name too. Like he's he corrected us on yeah. that. Yeah, I haven't yeah. I haven't uh, tried the new pronunciation <laughs> yet. So it's it's um, gonna take a minute, right? But yeah, I'm all, I'm all aboard. You're preaching the choir on him. So yeah, like I I love I love finally seeing that because there were some heated off season takes like where we were talking about this all off season. People are like, what first round pick on him? I'm like, first of all, who else are you gonna spend it on? Like this. It gets real sketchy after these guys. So yeah, like I'll do it. And I'm glad it's working out. Yeah. Got like a fruit fly flying around me. Um, yeah, I mean, I was I was extremely high on him. Um, my my buddy, you know, JC, JC Dynasty, mm -hmm. um, he was extremely high on him, and he pretty much I had to be high on him by association for the most yeah. part but I dove into his film and I watched him in depth the last couple of months um, leading up to the draft. And yeah, I was all the way in on him. I think I had him above um, Sharp by, yep, by the time I had my final rankings go. Um, I think he was at the one Oh nine or I think he could have even been the one ten for me. Um, I'm not sure in that range. Um, but yeah, it, he being small in that offense doesn't matter at all. Like people have to understand that your size in certain systems means nothing. Like realistically, like lining up in that backfield with all the motion that Miami does, Miami is already like they're moving three to four guys before the ball snapped on average. So there's so much movement. Like if you can catch people, like if like Tyreek is going to the left and then to the right, and then they always have like Smythe, move over um and then the the even the backfield like they're switching spots they're so discombobulated all the time that like there's openness everywhere like this is why Tua is Tua right now because every wide out is wide open um they have they have the DBs in a blender before they're even snapping the ball for the most part like the, you can see every catch that Tyreek makes he's like wide open like he's already like He's already got their shoes tied together when he comes out. So it's like he's already like has a free release so much. It's like Jalen Hyatt in in college ball, like on the Tennessee offense. Like it was like he, yeah. free release every time. That's what Tyreek Hill yeah, is on the Miami Dolphins. 
He's they called him Mickey Mouse offense. Yeah, I was like, I was Dude, watching that, and I was like, oh my god, those free releases. That's just not fair. That speed with Dude, that. he's got it's a free just, release all day. Like he's nowhere, he's nobody's beautiful. near Tyreek. Like ninety five percent of the catches that he makes, he's already like in wide open field. I wish I had some 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 of them to pull up because it's insane. Um, and that's all McDaniel's. McDaniel's offense is catered to like making the defense move to the point where they're confused and they they you know so a, a small running back like a chain is going to feast in that offense. Like that's why Mostert. I mean, Mostert's not a big dude. I don't know how big is Mostert. He's not even like he's that like, much bigger. He's like he's, six feet he's like, and um, he's like 10, 15 pounds heavier. Well, like I mean, he's gained some weight. Like so, chains gained some yeah. weight. Yeah. So but, like he's like two hundred yeah. five ish. I think. I think. People wanted to talk about a chain's weight when they didn't realize that he was a like a Olympic yeah. like runner. Like the dude was a sprinter. Like he had to keep his weight down. Because he had to be fast as hell. Um, he couldn't gain any weight, you know, because like he was a sprinter. Like he had, to, he was like, yeah. you know, that's exactly what he was. Um, so I think once he stopped doing that, I think weight happens. He gained some weight. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not worried about that at all. What I'm worried about is Miami's full breakdown of their, their backfield because Mostert had an amazing. So a chain had 18 carries for 203 yards, um, four catches for 30 yards and four total touchdowns. And then Mostert had 13 carries for 82 yards and then seven catches for 60 yards and four total touchdowns. So they pretty much had almost the same stat line. I think, no, well, a chain had almost a hundred more yards. Yeah. yeah. On less carries. Yeah. Like I think the, um, it's um, 40, he ran like 41% of the snaps and most are ran, I think like upper fifties, but I think, yeah, that's more the problem you're getting at. Right. Is how they're going to split that backfield because that, that limits the ceiling. Like you, you still need, if you want someone to be an elite fancy asset, they need snaps. Like you can't just be going here at 50%. It's, you have to be extremely efficient and betting on efficiency fluctuates. Just look at Jamar chase. Like that, that fluctuates from year to year. Like even the elite talents that fluctuate. So, that's kind of the concern, but like that was his first game. As long as he's the lead back and he's getting, you know, over 50%, we're getting closer to 60, like you're you're set up with this offense to smash. So if he's sitting in the 40s, he's gonna have boom bust games like he did. Obviously not 50 points, but like he'll put up a you know two touchdown game here, or he'll like break a long run there, which I think is the appeal where even if he doesn't get enough stats, he still has a long run, like that ability, take it 70 yards to the house at like any play. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's interesting. Um, but I think now is the, like the worst possible time to buy him off of probably the best game of his career. One of the best games, like you'll see. So I think we need to just kind of wait. If you didn't already buy in, there will come a point probably later in the season where he has a bad game or two, or you can buy that game for cheaper. But just like right now he's pushing like top 12 dynasty running backs. Like people shot him up. Like if you look at keep trade cut or bulletproof or any one of those sites, he went to the moon. And I was like, all right, like I love this guy, but let's just hold off for a minute, see how this works out. He's a rookie. It's still gonna take him time to earn more snaps, right? Like it's he's not a round one rookie, he's round three rookie. It takes him time. So like wait till midseason. He slowly acclimates more and more and more. And then if you're if you want to buy in, he'll probably be a little bit cheaper than he is right now, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not gonna buy him. I I owned, like I said, JC got me on a chain pretty early on in the process. So I own a great deal of him. Um, he was slipping into the second round for a yeah. lot of drafts. Um, you know, even not, though I had him valued, I had him valued much higher. I was taking him higher, but like when, you know, when I, there were a couple of times where I passed on him because I had needs, you know, like I, I went, um, Kincaid or, or somebody, um, you know, like flowers. I don't like guys. the draft for need, but like sometimes you, you might, if I had, yeah, like if I already had, crazy exposure to a chain so it was like i am i might you gotta yeah. yeah like if you're playing portfolio like we play portfolio you gotta like you gotta you can't be going like i know um dynasty x factor does not care about this like he's the one guy i've seen on twitter he's like i'll have 90 percent of this dude but like i'm just not trying to get burnt by an injury and it like takes my entire all my team so yeah like i try to keep it at a 30 percent threshold like i think he and yeah. cook james cook are the only two running backs i have over 30 percent right now in dynasty like of the guys yeah. that are actually i mean good. If we're talking about portfolio and stuff like that, like having, uh, you can't necessarily put all your eggs in one basket, and you can't you can't put everything in on 
the same players over and over again in your leagues because it's like setting a lineup for DFS. You know, like you mm-hmm. want to set a variety of lineups and one hits and you're good. Um, not to say that that's like you trust your guys that you you're going to draft. Like there's a process there. I'm high on guys for a reason and I love drafting those guys. But at the same time, like, am I going to pass on them to get other guys? I might like, like when you're looking at Addison and Zay flowers, like Mm -hmm. to have a couple Zay flowers, like, even though I'm super high on Addison, like I, I want that because we play in too many leagues, man. You know, if I was in like three leagues, that wouldn't happen. But like, you know, I'm in over 20 leagues. Like I'm going to, I'm going to go and get guys that I don't have because that's fun. And ultimately it comes down to being fun and this is what we do it for. But um, yeah, winning's great too, but yeah, I, you know, I need, I need to mix it up a little bit for sure. Yeah. I like having different guys too. Like as much as I, as I find myself with drafts, I'll like, I'll cluster to the same guy. So I have to check myself just because my bias creeps in. I'll be like, man, should I take this guy again? And I'm like, you know what? Like, let's take the other guy. Cause like I'll, so that's why tiers are super important to me. If you have a group of tiers, yeah. like I'll just pick, you know, pick and choose and be like, okay, I have five of this guy and I only have two of this guy. Let's take it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I will try my best to do that. It doesn't always work because sometimes I'm like YOLO, click the dude or whatever. But yeah, I try to, I try to keep it contained. Yeah. So we talked about Cam Akers. Let's move it to Kieran Williams. So obviously he's kind of the one man show in, um, on the Rams team right now. And, he had quite the game. So his first game free of Cam Akers was phenomenal. Um, and then this uh, was yesterday, actually. Um, you know, that game was a little sloppier, but I don't think it was on him. I think it was more so on the ramps. I think it was, you know, how they used him and, you know, Stafford not necessarily using like the dump off or the, or the screen pass or anything like that. Cause I, I watched it and I saw him open many times. Like I'm talking easily could have had like five or six more catches in that game. Um, but he finished off with uh, 10 carries for 38 yards and then two catches for 27 yards. Um, how do you feel about him this year? Like they're obviously committed to him. He's getting all, everything. Like I don't think any other running back got a touch yes. in this game. 100%. Like I think he was he was the only one to be in that backfield. Um, and I love I, that's what I want to see. I want to see that bad. I would probably almost have him where Jerome Ford is, if not higher, because of that usage. If that continues, like we're talking about a hundred percent snap share, dude. That's all like, you want yeah. in a in a. Like we're talking we were talking about Zach Evans, right, and how he can't, like, sniff the field. Like, that's super red flag. They called up other guys off the practice squad, like guys that don't matter, like Ronnie Rivers, those type of guys. Like, if Zach Evans is losing out to those guys, like, that's a problem. So, like, yeah. I'm pretty and much I, pouring I, one out for Zach Evans at this point. Like, it's just not going to happen for him. And it, I don't know if you're familiar, but, like, I'm a big Zach Evans guy. Like, I loved him all through college, and I'm super high on him. And I said he's going to be a sleeper, and we got to go draft him everywhere and grab him up in the fourth round or wherever you're going to get him. And he's going to steal that job because Cam Akers is a bum and this and that. And it turns out that he's not going to steal anything. I mean, not this year, but like I said – I, I've yeah. told people that, you know, these Karen Williams and he was not anybody that anybody had on the radar. I think a lot of people had him on the waiver wire um, yeah. up until even sometimes some leagues had him up until this first yeah. game. Um, so funny story. So I actually it, cut him in a league like a couple of weeks before the season opened. I was like, yeah, Kyron Williams, yeah, it's not going to happen for him, right? So I cut him. And of course, like that's backfiring on me tremendously because I picked up some rookie who doesn't do any shit. So it was like, all right, that was a massive mistake, but you know, well, you'll make it from time to time. It happens. It's just like, yeah, like if you want to hold on to that guy, yeah, feel free because like he might get a shot and injury happens because this level of usage, like injuries spike for players. So if they're going to run him out with 100% of snaps, like that does worry me long term. That just increases the like injury risk. So there is that. He's also a smaller back too, and he's like not yeah. super fast. So it's just like all kind of working against him. But like, I mean, for the short term, like, hell yeah, ride that production out because. It's like him and Zach Moss, the the two guys out of nowhere, right? And they're like like the RB one bell cows. So yeah, like Zach Moss, man. Zach <laughs> Moss was season, the waiver wire hero, I think, yeah. thus far this year. Um, I, I saw him just... traded for twenty four second 
not that long ago, actually. Um, so, so yeah, he's it's interesting, Zach Moss, because like if JT doesn't come back, like you're smash, especially with Gardner for like however long Gardner's playing, like that's fantastic for him. So yeah, like yeah, I like yeah, both I, those guys think, this year. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. I mean, if you're talking redraft, these guys are amazing values. Um, you know, I obviously would suggest moving off of them after this year if you're a contender like they're great great pieces to have um but if they have a good year like they're immediate sells if you're not even in contention towards the end of the season like move off of them sell them to anybody that is is in the ship or whatever um if you have no trade deadline in your league like yeah get rid of them in the playoffs and and um i don't i don't know i mean you, we see we see Damian Pierce hold over. Like I didn't think he was ever going to have that that job this year, um, after how he finished last year. But like he still is somehow getting carries. Like he's fine, you know. Like he's still an RB, a back end RB two, um, and even Pacheco is still he's getting work. Like he's not doing anything with it. But like you know, um, these guys are are people that I told everyone to sell. I mean, they're not going to hold that value. For much longer like we can see that yeah. kind of fading a little bit on these guys right now um yeah i think it's interesting if you don't like if you don't need them like you're not counting on them for production like flip them like go get what you can get for them immediately because this is the peak window it's not going to get better for them long term so like yeah if you can get something like sell high on these guys absolutely go do it if you need them and you're a contender then write them out like that's kind of just like dynasty right if you yeah. don't need them, then I I have no idea why they're on your roster because like that's just burning free capital right there. So yeah, not I everyone think, is a, a Ramondre Stevenson or uh, Aaron Jones. You know, like right. you're you're not gonna get a fourth, fifth round running back that keeps that job. They have to have like elite skill level almost everywhere. You know, like when you look at Aaron Jones, you look at Ramondre Stevenson. These guys are elite, and they have elite like traits. Um, so you might, you might need to uh, have one of those to stay in the league and none of these guys, they might be good at certain things. I think Ford is actually a really good, um, route runner. Uh, and I don't think he's going to be an elite route runner. I don't think he's going to have that staple. Um, but they're not going to have staying power for the most part. Um, so yeah, like I think one of these guys we're talking about is probably going to be like important next year. It's just good luck telling me which guy this is. Right. So like. Because there's just so many running backs and there's people that need jobs, there's always like solid running backs to find. So team could be like, you know what? Let's ride with one of these guys next year. Like, but I'm I'm not willing to test that theory, right? I don't I don't want to yeah. just be stuck holding because they draft, you know, the the next, you know, like Travion Henderson or Braylon Allen or one of these guys around two right next year, right? These guys get cooked. So like that's that's the whole issue with it. So like yeah, replace them. If I had to guess, yeah. Sorry, if I had to guess, it would probably be Ford because of of Chubb coming back. I think he would probably, if he shows out this year, makes the most sense to carry over because, like, they're gonna ha bring Chubb back, like, and have him come back like very gingerly, and you know, like Ford can be that stopgap a little bit, and then if Chubb comes back and he's Chubb, which I don't, I don't know, like, there's a slim chance of that happening, but if he comes back and he shows out, I think Ford could be like that, that thunder lightning kind of combo. Um, I don't know. That's the interesting it's, thing is he's like Chubb's got like a huge like relief on his contract where they can cut him and save like fourteen million dollars next year. So like realistically, if they don't, if Chubb's not what he's looking like, theoretically they could just cut Chubb and bring somebody in cheap. So like there is that scenario too on the flip side. So there's yeah. just a lot of uncertainty in Cleveland, like that. Like we're talking about it, it's just there's so much uncertainty long term for them. So yeah, it's like that's where you can make the money. It's just finding out which situation. But yeah, I think I think of those running backs for is the most talented. Like. If I'm betting on one of those guys, like it's for like he has the yeah. traits you're chasing, where it's like you know that. Yeah, and he's he's on like a run first offense too. Like he's yes. on a he's already in a system that is heavily run oriented. So like you know they're not going to change the system; they're just going to plug somebody in and keep it almost similar to what they had with Chubb. So I, at least that's what we've seen so far. Um, but we are man, we're cooking on that. Um, let's move it over to. 22 wide receivers. So a segment that I'm going to call level of panic, um, you know, because man, like we, 
saw these guys finish off last year, like so hot, you know, we we're like, this is, you know, we're going to boost them up. Um, so Garrett Wilson was a borderline first round pick, you know, like he was in the, on the turn there for a little while. <clears throat> um, Olave was in like the early third, late second for the most part. Um, Drake London was like in the fourth and then we had Dotson and, and Burks kind of like back in sixth, seventh round area. Um, I don't know. Like we're talking Garrett Wilson. We had him propped up in value so much Too high. because of Aaron Rodgers. Like yeah. we, we had him way up there and, and we didn't really think about Rodgers being like 38 years old. And like the possibility that, you know, Wilson is only going to be with him for a short period of time. Obviously nobody wished injury on Rogers, but um, I think it was kind of silly in hindsight to put him way up there next to the, the CDs and the AGBs and, you know, like everyone people like at one point in time were claiming that he was going to slide up into the chase and JJ territory at one point in time. Yeah. Um, a lot of people had him above CD and AJB and they had them as the Garrett Wilson wide receiver three in dynasty, um, which, you know, I don't, I don't blame you. Cause like what he showed his rookie year was incredible, mm -hmm. um, but they do not have a quarterback at all. And what they're doing is they're, kind of committing to Zach Wilson in a way. Um, they're not signing anybody. And as it stands, Garrett Wilson is wide receiver 32. Um, and in fantasy, we're talking about being behind um, Addison, Zay Flowers, and Dobbs. So, like, you know, we're talking about being behind fifth, sixth round Dynasty wide receivers. I mean, Dobbs way back in the 13th round. Um, why? Well, I don't think that stays that way, but his value right now, he's not winning a lot of matchups for you. Um, is there a level of panic with Garrett Wilson for you? Do you feel like you're – because the quarterback doesn't have any remedy in sight. Um you know, like Roger says, he's going to be back at the end of the year for the playoff push. But I mean, what is Rogers after a, a torn Achilles? Like, what does he look like? I, I don't know because he doesn't have, he didn't have mobility before he tore his Achilles. Like he was very <laughs> rigid and um, he wasn't moving out of the pocket or, you know, that was his motion was very limited. So I don't know. I don't know if he's going to come back and, and be Aaron Rodgers because he's, I think it was his, his throwing foot. I want to say it was his right foot. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Even if he comes back and he's like 90% Aaron Rodgers, what he was before, that's still not great because Aaron Rodgers wasn't like um, the, the all incumbent like QB one last year. Um, no, he struggled. So man. what do you he like? So the thing with interesting with him, the injury, Cam Akers is the earliest comeback from Achilles at 170 days. The For them to come back to the playoffs is 120 days from the injury. So Aaron Rodgers has to beat that timetable by like two months. So like, I don't know how anyone actually expects Aaron Rodgers to come back. Like that just seems like we're just wish casting. So I would yeah. not count on that. And then like, also like you're saying, coming back from that injury, he's in the same hell and we'll get to Drake London, the same exact crap that Jake, Drake London's dealing with. So like realistically, and I actually had Olave ahead of Wilson before, like, the season started just because I was so impressed with what Olave was doing down the field. But, like, if you could at least, like, just pivot to Olave or just throw a second to do that, like, and move off of Wilson and just get that security because, like, now he's playing with James Winston, even with Derek Carr, so it doesn't matter. Um, I'm happily doing that. Like, I am – Yeah. I, I moved to off Garrett guys, Wilson. Like, Sorry. Yeah. I, I moved off Garrett Wilson in a couple leagues. I, I In a compete team – I traded him for Tyreek Hill straight up. And I, I just said, up, yeah. YOLO on that. And I, I'm going to yeah, eat like, the years and, and whatever, but I know what Tyreek Hill is. And then in another league, I traded um, Garrett Wilson for Amon Ra and a 24 second. And that's, that's fine with me too. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, um, so. yeah. If you can sell any one of those similar valued assets and if you want to go to the production, like I'll even do it for Devonte Adams on contenders. Like I don't care. Give me the guy that's like the best wide receiver in football. I know we love Garrett Wilson, but he's never actually done it. And that's the, I hate when we value these guys. Not like when we overvalue because we overvalue young players a lot in dynasty. And JC was the one talking about this with Tyreek where he had him a wide receiver six. And I was like, when you think about it that way, like, these wide receivers, they're insulated, but it's more value than it is production. So, like, if you're chasing that value, is that hurting your lineup, right? Because you yeah. have these guys putting up, like, 13 to 15 points per game, and Tyreek's going 20, Devontae's getting, like, 21. Like, that's a massive difference. And same thing like Cooper Cup, right? So you have to decide, is it worth it? And if I got Drake London or Garrett Wilson on my roster, like, I'm like, this sucks because they're not doing anything for me. It's just a ball of value that's not producing. So, yeah, like, if – and rebuild, or if I'm rebuilding, yeah, go get those guys because, like, they're elite assets and you want them. But contending teams, I I really don't want to pay the cost for those guys if they're not going to produce for me. So, like, this is something I've shifted on the past few years where I'm like, I don't care so much about age. Like, I'll just take the three-year window that's Tyreek and I'll just ride with that, right? Because he's going to massively outscore him by over 100 points on the year, like, at least. Like, he's going to he's smack. Like, yeah, yeah, so, like, I'm totally fine doing that. And it makes sense, right? Like, three years is an eternity in Dynasty. We don't know what's going to happen with these young guys. Most like, leagues it, don't last for three years. I mean, let's be real. Like people, people have, so I've, I've talked about this a couple of times where, you know, when you do your rankings, are you going to do it based off value? Are you going to do it based off of production? And that's always a struggle with me. Like, do I want to mm -hmm. do it based off of how these guys are going to finish this year or how they are valued within a startup or within a dynasty community? And I'm, I'm kind of, Going back, I was more of an ageist before. I'm going back into the production side because it's like, dude, trading Garrett Wilson for Tyreek Hill straight up to me like a month ago would have been absolutely insanity. But at the same right. time, I was like, I like money. I like mm -hmm. scoring points. I think I'm going to go this route. And, and you know, what if I, like I said, like your leagues don't last. My lawn in Santa league is nine years. And I've been playing Dynasty for like 20 years almost at this point in time. Like I... You know, it 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 happens. Leagues fold and people get busy, and it, it does happen. Even like you know, like even your long-standing leagues are mostly redraft leagues for the most part because you only have to do those half mm -hmm. the year, not even half the year, like like six months of the year, five months of the year. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's great to move these these young assets. Because you're right, they might ever hit a Tyreek Hill peak. Um, and Tyreek Hill right now is probably looking at almost wide receiver one. And finish wise, I think he's he's edging. He's very close to that. Um, yeah. especially if they keep they keep doing what they're doing over there. Um it's absurd. Yeah, like I, I made the mistake uh, a mistake a couple years ago, right? When Tyreek left um Kansas City went to Miami. I was like, Oh, I'm worried about him, right? So I flipped him for Elijah Moore and somebody else who's underperformed, like Rashad Bateman or one of those guys, right? Like, it was that package plus, like, a second. And I'm, like, looking at this two years later, like, holy, I messed up so bad, right? Because I was yeah. like, oh, I'm going to chase my youth. It's going to be great. But that was the one trade where I was like, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, I, there's just so much risk with these guys. And I think that kind of goes undersold with a lot of them. And obviously, those guys are a little bit more risky than Wilson and London. Like, we know they're good. Like, that's a different story, right? But the situation still sucks. So... That's the part I struggle with. Like this offseason, I had CeeDee Lamb. I flipped him for Devonte Adams in a first, and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to bank the first, and then I'll be able to spend that on a wide receiver Raider. So, like, my whole thought process on these guys, if I can flip them into a win-now asset and I get, like, the extra first on top of it, like, I'm totally fine. Yeah. With and so, like, yeah, into the roster and you get the production. So, like, I love going that way to do it. Yeah, I like that where um, one of my favorite, like, methods of trading is, like, call them insulated insulated trades where you're like trading for somebody that like if you take a garrett wilson you trade him for like a Devonte adams and a first for mm -hmm. example like you get a mid to early first like you know good value because Devonte adams is going to outscore garrett wilson for maybe yeah. maybe two years um i i mean that's it's realistic to think that garrett wilson might get outscored by Devonte adams for two years and that's with you know, whoever, Jimmy Garoppolo or whoever they have throwing the ball to him. Um, and then you get a first and you get, you get a reroll at that point. Sorry. Sorry about that. 
Um, but yeah, like the yeah. people don't want to trade these guys. Like they're so addicted to the youth of them. Like they're still insulated with value. So that's the thing. Like you can even Garrett Wilson right now, you can get a pretty penny for him. Drake London's a little bit just because the production has not come at all. So he's falling off more, but like he still costs a lot of money. Like you're not going to get it. Yeah. Let's, second. let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk Drake London. Let's, let's shift it over to him. Um, <sighs> so frustrating. Dude. I hate the, I, I hate the Falcons. I hate Arthur Smith so much, man. Dude, I, it's I dislike I dislike that man so much, and his mustache has made me even dislike him more than I did before. I think I just look at his face, and it's like, uh, like you want to just like smush it into a jello. Mm-hmm. Like you take it and like, like slowly move his head <laughs> down, like slowly move it into jello, and just have him, just like, just like eat breathe it. in the jello. <laughs> it's in his nose and his eyes. It's coming oh, out of his man. ears. Son of a, yeah, it's it's so frustrating. Right? It's it's yeah. the worst. So like he runs a good offense. That's the thing. Like it's the opposite of a fantasy offense. I mean, besides Bijan, Bijan's just gonna be an RB one. But he, even Bijan could be like like way better than what he is now. Like yeah, he could. Like, he doesn't even have a rushing touchdown. Like he he could no. be like way better than what he is now. Um, so I, I'm the one thing I am saying is like Desmond Ritter sucks, and that's like also building on top of it. So if he had like a good quarterback like that, like we had Tannehill a few years ago, like they would be able to produce. So like there's that on top. It's not just the freaking Arthur Smith. It's the double down effect of getting Desmond Ritter, who's just not a good quarterback. So it's just like hits you both ways, where like you have no out in this situation with Drake London. You need and Kyle Pitts also, but you need them to be like super efficient. And it's so difficult. Like efficiency comes and goes. Like we've seen it. Like Pitt, like with Pitts, he doesn't even look healthy right now. Like that deep ball, he was like struggling to run. But like London is just man, he's he put up similar numbers to freaking Olave and Garrett Wilson. It's just like his yard per out run, all that PFF grade, all that stuff was elite, right? It's just the situation is so terrible. He was valued below them. So this offseason, I was like, yeah, if you can get him cheaper, go do it. But like I'm thinking about that decision on a few teams for having London. I'm like. What the hell do I do with this guy? Because you can't start him. Like it's just it's brutal. you can't even really so trade him. To, yeah, like yeah. he's. I was I'm not sure where he's at, but he's a little bit lower than those two. So like he's cheaper. Where I don't mind investing in him compared to like Garrett Wilson, just because like he is not as insulated right now. So like I could take the hit a little bit, you know. If it's like a late first on a contending team, whatever. It's late first, whatever. But yeah, it's it sucks because you don't know when that production is going to come. Whenever it comes, until that quarterback upgrade comes or. Arthur Smith gets fired or just yeeted to the moon, right? Like you're just sitting there wondering, like, what do I do with this guy? So, like, this is what I mean when we talk about value. If it's strictly value and no production, there's an issue where that value is going to erode at some point. So, like, this is the thing we have to think Absolutely. about. Absolutely. How long can you hold on to that guy? Like, do where's the point? And when are you like, you know what? I'm cutting bait. So, like, I get it why people are just kind of just out on Drake London, but he's so good of a talent. That's the tantalizing aspect too. So you have to fight yourself. Um, if I'm rebuilding, yeah, like I'm going to get him right now because if I'm rebuilding for like two, three years, then that's the perfect guy to do it with because he's not going to give you points and that's just a better draft pick. So like, that's the win there. But like, if you're competing, it's just, it's just, I, I don't want to do it. Like, I really don't want to do it. So that's the hard part. Yeah. He's, he's unstartable at this point in time. Um, I last, I want to say two months ago, I was offered Devontae Adams straight up for Drake London. And I laughed. I thought it was hilarious. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, what do you think? Like, I need a first on top of Devontae Adams to even think about that. Mm-hmm. Um, That's great. And now I, I wish I did it so bad. I wish I just took him and, you know, like it, it's, it's tough because he is super talented. But like now it's more about usage than it's ever been before. Like people would always say that your talent's going to shine through and your talent's going to show out and you got to bet on the talent and this and that. Um, Now it doesn't matter. You know, like it's if the offense isn't scheming around you, like you're not valuable in fantasy. Um, Yeah, like it's unfortunate. We're so hyper reactive down Dynasty 2. Like we treat it so much similar to redraft than like I've ever seen before. Where it's like you see, like we talk about A chain, his value shots to the moon, like based off of one game, right? So this is the thing we kind of have to take into consideration, and it's a lot closer to redraft than a lot of people want to admit. And that's kind of the thing where I'm more willing to buy into these older assets, like Cooper Cup, Demonte Adams, guys that they're not regressing at all. Like they still have that production. There's nothing like on their profile that sucks. So it's like, you know what? Like I'll just contending teams, like I'll just go do it. Like I'll be like, 
if a team's struggling and they have those assets, like if they have a Kelsey or an Adams or whatever, like I'm just going to go get those guys. So I'll just here, take my young guy that's not producing. You can deal with that bag of shit. Like I don't want to deal with it. And like I'll get the production and continue spending. And like on the flip side of that, if I'm rebuilding, I'm going to do the exact opposite, right? So it's um, it's interesting in how like quickly we change in Dynasty, but I think that's kind of just – I think the more we think about it, the more I'm realizing it's a lot closer to redraft than it's like I ever remember it being. Yeah, it is. And I think that's more about like um, social media than anything else. Like it's very like Twitter or X oriented in the sense that, you know, like these yeah. values are crowdsourced and, you know, like people like have this mentality that like it's a sh- it's like a follow like you have to follow this person um you don't want to be missing on this this player is what the mentality is for the most part like i don't want to if people that didn't trade for a chain or didn't get him in drafts now now they're like man i wish i i have to have him i have to have a share mm-hmm. of him um and they're they're valuing him way above what they valued him like 24 hours ago at this point in time. That's Um, that's the thing. Yeah. I saw um, Adam Hartstead said this, he was talking about like, why are people trading Drake London for Zay flowers? It's like, he's like the dude Drake London, like that profile we're chasing is perfect. Like it's elite. Right. And he's like, we don't know about Zay flowers, but like people are so willing to do it even on a rookie that like they're unsure of, even though like I like Zay flowers a lot, a lot of people like him. But just flipping the guy we know is good for the uncertainty, like I wouldn't expect people to do that. But you're seeing it happen, like where Zay Flowers is dominating the Twitter poll, and I'm like, well, I guess that's where we're at with these guys. So that's kind of the the just instantaneousness of it all. It's just kind of crazy to me nowadays in Dynasty. Yeah, it's a great thing to take advantage of in Dynasty. It's like the <laughs> it's the short sighted, you know, like very reactionary mentality. Um, that I always kind of preach on where it's, you know, like these players can flash anything in a three game period. Like you, yeah. you can, you can see somebody can put up, like we saw Sam Darnold put up QB one numbers for like four weeks in a row last year. Oh man. And I remember dude, everyone was like trading for him. They were trading 22 first for him or whatever they were doing. Like, it was just like, He's he's figured it out, and they're gonna go trade for him, and they're gonna go get him. Like any player can flash elite mm-hmm. in like two games, in three games. I need to see it. Like I need to see a six game to eight game period. I need to see it every game for like I, I want to say almost a year before I I I almost I, and you can miss players that way, but like mm-hmm. you got to keep it safe. Like you can. You can go buy these guys. Like you can buy Terrence Marshall. Like people were like, "Oh, he's killing it in camp." Like people were buying him for first at one point in time because they were like, yep. it, "He's the real deal," because he was good in college. Like you don't right, know that, what you're gonna get. The photo of him like uh, above DJ Moore and the other guy like soaring in the end zone catching a catch, and people were like, "Oh my god, he's him!" And you're like, "Dude, this guy hasn't played a snap. He's been injured. What are we doing here?" So yeah, like like you're talking about, you see that, and it's just like. Ooh, you have to check yourself sometimes because we can get wild and like your the social media aspect does drive it. So it's just it's interesting to see just yeah, how reactionary we are. And like it's it's Puka Nakua, like that's the exact guy we're talking about. Like he is just took off. Like so it's it's how do you deal with that type of guy, right? Because now people want first for him and you can't trade him first yeah. and that. So like that's kind of the that's the hard part. It's like, ooh, I want Puka, but I don't pay that price. So it's like, where do you decide? I'm not that? buying him that's anywhere. I'm not gonna <laughs> not buy him. Been, no, a new price. No, I'm no. all set. Uh, it's so funny it's like and there's like it's funny because like you see people that were like hacking him up in the off season and i was like, okay yeah like he could be good sure and then they're just like victory lapping after two weeks i'm like well, dude like we got 15 more games like let's take a break for a second and see what happens so yeah it's yeah. just it's just so reactionary that is yeah we saw the rams offense go like fall back to earth um mm-hmm. this past game you know and yeah, who knows what's gonna happen? I like Puka a lot as a player, but do I think he's gonna get like twelve targets every game? No, no. Yeah, he was. Like, there's he games was where Stafford only that. throws the ball like fifteen times. You know, like I don't think he's gonna get twelve targets a game. But no, and then Cup comes back. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like okay, his value's going to tank when he comes back. So if you want to buy, just wait, and then you could probably buy for a lot cheaper because people are like, oh yeah, Cooper Cup, he's the guy. It's like yeah, then then if you want to buy, sure. But now it's terrible time to buy. Terrible time. Um, 
Dude, well, I appreciate you coming on, man. It was a, it was a lot of fun chopping up with you. I had a lot more to the show sheet, but we got stuck, and I think we covered a lot of content, regardless. Of, you know, that was that was a good show. Do you have anything coming up? Any content or or any shows or anything that you want to plug before we we sign off here? Yeah, man. I just wanted to like thank you for having me on. I know we did run a little long. That's kind of me. I kind of ramble. So like, I'll I'll take the blame for that one. That's just it. Just no, gets going it, and like. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah. So like, we do um, I'm on the Rat Pack Fantasy Football Channel. We have like a, basically a video a day. So like on YouTube Live, we're running all the time doing the sit starts, Dynasty redraft. We're doing a lot of that, doing stuff with League Winners, P2W. So like, you just basically just you see the GM105 on Twitter, and then all the other social media platforms. Like I'm on all of them. So if you want to check it out, like feel free. Like I'll I'll chop it up, DMs, whatever you want. Like I'm you know I'm here to help people out. So that's what it's all about. Awesome, man. Yeah. So. Um, we just dropped Devi Dynasty last, actually today. Um, so new episode of that. We have another fantasy show on Sunday. Um, and then next week I have Christian Williams on as well. So should be a good show. And maybe Jagger is feeling up for it, that he's going to rejoin me. Um, but, you know, once again, I want to thank Jesse for joining me. You can find him at J Moeller. Right, J yep, yep. at J Moeller 05 on X. Um, he's got great content, and then he's always working with Nick Script over there, um, P2W. So, a lot of good stuff. You can definitely check him out everywhere. And, uh, like I said, we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Uh huh, yeah, the revolution, y'all, y'all, y'all. Yeah, the revolution. The revolution, y'all, will not be televised. Yeah, you gotta wake up, open your eyes. Make a change in your life. And find a new way of living. It's time to start living for the children. Everybody look into my life. Tell me what you see. The perseverance of a young man sitting is so free. LA Mac be the champ, but still fighting the struggle. They couldn't shut my mouth with a muzzle. I'm hard to figure like a puzzle. My name ought to be Jigsaw. Rough around the edges. I've been known.